أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويوم يحشر أعداء الله إلى النار فهم يوزعون حتى إذا ما جاءوها حتى إذا ما جاءوها شهد عليهم سمعهم وأبصارهم وأبصارهم وجلودهم بما كانوا يعملون وقالوا لجلودهم لما شهدتم علينا قالوا أن تقن الله الذي أنطق كل شيء وهو خلقكم أول مرة وإليه ترجعون وما كنتم تستتيرون أن يشهد أن يشهد عليكم سمعكم ولا أبصاركم ولا أبصاركم ولا جلودكم ولكن ولكن ظننتم أن الله أن الله لا يعلم كثيرا مما تعملون وذلك ظنكم الذي ظننتم بربكم أرداكم فأصبحتم من الخاسرين فإن يصبروا فالنار مثوى لهم وإن يستعتبوا فما هم من المعتبين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد. So we are going through different um, um, states that our hearts can have. We're talking about قلب, the ruhani قلب, not the physical heart. And we have talked about various different diseases that we can have. We talked in detail about nifaq the other day and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us from nifaq. Um, and then we talked about qalb salim. We talked about a sound heart. And there's one particular marad or disease that the heart can get. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sorry, one of the, the ailments of the hearts that are absolutely, absolutely devastating for a believer. And if we look at the, the, the punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written in the Quran for this ailment, there is no other ailment or disease in the Quran or the Hadith literature that has a much severe punishment than this punishment. And the punishment is iterated by the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who says what is going to be the punishment. Now, if we look at the statements of the scholars, the ulama, then you will find that there is no sin of the heart that the ulama, they have a much more severe statements about it. So if you look at some of the scholars, they have said that this sin of our hearts is worse than stealing. Some of the scholars said that this is worse than zina. Some of the scholars, they said that this sin is the source of all the other major sins of the heart. And it's not nifa, but it is something else. And it has to do with a simple, yeah, it's, you know, 
What is it? Tell us. <laughs> Cliffhangers, you know. It is so uzvan having bad assumptions. So uzvan. The entire Quran is filled with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking in various verses about su'uvan, about different types of van, and we're going to get into that today, inshaAllah. Now, first part, the word van in the Arabic language, we must understand what it means. It means that, so in the context, you have 100% ilm. So ilm is defined as Knowledge that you have, ma'lumatun yutabiqul waqi'ah. It's information that is congruent to the reality. And jahal is the opposite of that. If I say that this box is black, it's jahal because it's not. And if I say this table is white, it's jahal because it's opposite of the reality. But if I say this is black, then that's haq, that is truth, and that is ilm yaqeen. Now, between these two extremes, there are the center, which is shak. You are 50%. I think this is black, maybe it's white. I really don't know. 50-50. When you are below 50, it's waham. Waham. You're below 50. I think, I'm not really sure if it's black, but I don't know. I can't say much. Okay. And then you have one, where you are 51 to 99 in that range. So which means that you may not have all the evidence, but you very strongly believe that that is the true reality. Okay. So su uvan is when I, my heart is filled with a bad thought about anybody. It could be about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It could be about an individual. It could be about your mother. About your, about your father. It could be about anyone. When the heart is filled with a negative thought, which is baseless, there is no base for it. La dalila alayk. You don't have an evidence for it. You just think, oh, you know what? Maybe this is like that. And then you start dwelling on that thought. And it leads us into the state where we go from 50% to 54, 55. And the more we think about it, the more we start believing, no, no, this person is out there to hurt me. This person really does not like me. And we start making all of these assumptions. Bidun dalil. There is no evidence for it. Just because my heart feels like it. Su'udhan. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, he says, so one is harder to fix than a person addicted to zina. Because in zina, it's this abstinence with the physical nature. You can do various different things in the physical environment of that person to make him away from that. But so one is the fight that you and I will have to fight on our own. And as we're going to see some of the ilaj of it, that, you know, it is impossible to cure it without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what, what does the Qur'an and Sunnah, they say about su'udhan? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an. And then, the, I mean, I'm going to just allude to the, the point of the verses that are necessary. So remember in Battle of Hunayn, right? There were a group that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent nu'asan. He sent a very deep sleep for them. Yagsha ta'ifatun minkum, a group. Wa ta'ifatun. There was another group. Qad ahammat anfusuhum yadhunnuna billahi ghayr al-haq. There was another group. They started thinking, man, Prophet ﷺ is going to die. Muslims are not going to survive. It's going to be a horrible end. This war is about to end. This is the end of Muslims. Why did he brought us over here? Right? And in the in next part of the ayah, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if we had not gone with you, ma qutilna hahuna, we would not. These are the thoughts that started having. And Allah calls this, this is a dhan with Allah. You started having assumptions about Allah, ghayr al haq. You don't have any dalil for it. And today, what we are witnessing with our brothers and sisters in Gaza, in Palestine, in Sudan, in Kashmir, in China, we see Muslims 
that have, mashallah, amazing lights. They're driving amazing cars. And they have bad opinions about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bad opinions about assumptions about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, Allah does not like the ummah. If we were the chosen ummah, why are we in such a distress? Where is our Islam? Look at the prosperity of the West. Look at the third world Muslim countries. And we make these assumptions. And many of these assumptions are the product of the colonial colonization colonies that we came from. Right? As I told you this before, there's a khutbah that I did, which is the, the five things that the colonizers did to the ummah. Right? You can look it up on YouTube. But one of the things was that they changed our operating system of how we look at the world. Because when a calamity would fall on a Muslim in the past, they would never think negative about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will always have positive hope in Allah. They would remember those verses that you are going to be victorious as long as you are believers. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next ayah, and these are the verses that I recited. Now look at the verses, they're so powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ <coughs> So on the day of judgment, when our skins are going to testify against us, when our entire body will testify against us, وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ they're going to say to their own skin, لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا Why did you testify against me? The jild, the skin is going to say that Allah is the one, He is the one who made everything speak and He made us speak today. And then Allah says, وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَتِرُونَ And remember all the things, الَفْعَالَ الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ تَفْعَلُونَ تَسْتَتِرُونَ why you used to believe those sins now today your own eyes and hands your own everyone is testifying you did this you did this and you thought that neither your eyes your ears neither your skin nothing can testify i can do all the sins who is watching Again, one. The person who's committing the sin, he thinks most probably Allah is not gonna get me. Most probably Allah is because if we had yaqeen that al qahar the most overpowering, al jabbar is going to hold us accountable, do we really think we would sin? But we are in the state of dhan. We are not at 100% that Allah is going to hold us accountable, but we're somewhere in between. 51 to 99. And Allah is like, Walakin, the problem is, now Allah is telling us on the Day of Judgment, Walakin ظننتم أن الله لا يعلم كثيرا مما تعملون. We deep down inside believe, and we have this one, Allah doesn't know. He really doesn't know the, the fine, minute details. I can over, I can, I can do tawbah insha'Allah. وَذَلِكُمْ ظَنُّكُمُ الَّذِي ظَنَنْتُمْ بِرَبِّكُمْ This was what you thought Allah is going to do. أَرْدَاكُمْ This assumption of yours that Allah is not capable and Allah is not watching Hasha led you to your own destructions. When we think and make assumptions about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are not true, it has very severe ends. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُعَذِّبُ اللَّهُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ وَالْمُشْرِكَاتِ Allah is going to punish the hypocrites. May Allah protect us from that. The female ones and the male ones, and the mushrikeen and the female and mushrikat, the female and the male idolaters. The ones who associate partners. Now Allah says, The quality that Allah is emphasizing is not their nifaq and not their shirk. But what led them to nifaq and what led them to shirk is their bad assumptions about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
الظانين بالله ظن السوء الله لا يرحمنا الله لا يعطينا all of these things that we sometimes think every single person that has come and discussed their doubts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it begins with false and evil assumptions about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it starts with like a seed and we start thinking 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 and then it leads to I don't want to be a Muslim literally after Jum'ah I met um, you know I met someone over here their own child their own child has publicly professes that he's no longer a Muslim. May Allah you bring him back. What's the first thing? Allah is if Allah is so merciful, then how come so many people in Gaza are dying? So because we don't understand how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works. So su with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is haram bi ijma'a it's a sin and it is from the kabair of qulub it is the major sins of the heart as imam ghazali says min kabair al qulub there are seven eight things one of them is su having bad assumptions then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuha alladhina amanu o you who believe اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن stay away from majority of assumptions most assumptions that we make that are baseless and non-factual Allah is saying stay away from them why? Allah says إِنَّ بَعْدَ الظَّنِّ إِثْمٌ that there is a possibility that those assumptions a good number of them in those assumptions are going to be sinful. Stay away from these assumptions. Never assume a thing without facts. You know, there's, it is mentioned about some of the ulama that, and this is a funny story, it's related to food, but you know, one of the alim, he would eat the entire plate that was served to him by his wife. And some of the students knew that he was not hungry. But he still finished the entire plate. So they would ask him, why would you do that? He said, I would I do this so that my wife does not have any false or bad assumptions about me that I don't like to see. Notice how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in itikaf, in the last 10 nights, he met Safiya radiallahu anha. Safiya bint Huayy ibn Akhtab. Right? He met her. And as she was leaving the masjid, <coughs> It was night time. Some of the Sahabas, they were walking in Masjid al Nabwi, so Rasulullah, and they, they walked away, so Rasulullah called them back. And he looked at them and he said, Innaha Safiya. This is Safiya, my wife, like I'm with nobody else. So the Sahabas, he said, Ya Rasulullah, Ashukku feek. Like, we're not going to doubt you. We know you're not going to be doing anything wrong like that. And then he says, that shaitan runs in the veins of man the way your blood runs in your veins. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith, Iyakum wa dhan. Stay away from all types of assumptions. فَإِنَّ الظَّنْ أَكْذَبُ الْحَدِيثِ Because assumptions are the most false speech that exists in the world. Anything that is based on assumption. Oh, did you hear so-and-so does not like you? Why? I think so. When we hear, I think so, and they don't, have, you just leave. You're like, brother, just don't bother me. Zakallah khair. I think so is not based on anything. You must have factual evidence. And even if you have factual evidence, you must confer with that person before talking to the rest of the world. You should talk to them personally. That I heard that so-and-so, is this true? And it could be completely false. In another hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that when a person is about to die, that you must have good opinion about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I had mentioned this to you that when a friend of mine, 
he went to the hospital and he was about, you know, he was, there was a lady that was about to die. And, طيب, Bismillah. <clears throat> now, one of the first reasons, some of the reasons that the ulama, they have said why people, they actually fall under suh of dhan is, first one is al-jahl, ignorance. They just don't have enough awareness about suh of dhan being such a, a sinful act of our heart. Number two is su'ul qasd. They have ill intentions to begin with. Such a person you cannot reason with. You can give them all the adilla and all the evidences, but they initiated the assumption with a bad intention. So you can flip upside down, do whatever, nothing's going to change. Su'ul qasd. From the beginning, he never intended good. Number three, ittiba'ul hawa, to follow our desires vainly. And what happens when we follow our desires? We almost become subservient to the desires of human beings. Desires of human beings. Let's go there, let's go there. Whatever the nafs wants, we become subservient to that. Next, musahaba to ahlil fisti wal fujur. When we hang out with the wrong type of people, then it becomes very difficult for us to rectify our inside. Ramadan is an, an exercise for all of us. And it is an exercise where we can actually rectify our in, the inside of us. So that when Ramadan ends, we don't end. We don't only show up to Ramadan and leave. Because after Ramadan, Allah is still the same. It's the same masjid, same Rabb, same you, same me. So the decision we have to make in the last few days is how do we want to end this? Are we tired that we're not able to drink food and we're not able to enjoy our lives? Then there's a point of reflection for that person that, you know, what have you achieved or accomplished in the month of Ramadan? But again, going back at Su Ubban, this is the time where you can have good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah allowed you to have a life, allowed you to have food today. There are brothers and sisters that don't have a single morsel to eat. And the shukr that we must convey to that food. There are those who literally are breaking their fast on just tea and bread. And they think that they are the best people of, of the world because they have something to eat. Then the next thing is al hasad. When we have jealousy, oftentimes we start making assumptions for other persons. Oh, you know what? He, this person doesn't earn his income from halal. He keeps changing his car all the time. When we make assumptions like that, oh, there must be... He must be doing something haram to earn this much money. There has to be something there. When we have jealousy, that jealousy would lead us to have false assumptions about our own brothers and sisters. Now, coming to the, the, the end of this, I want to end with this inshallah. Some of the things that can help us, al-wasail, some of the things that can really help us to get rid of this suh udhan. The first and foremost, Allah's help. As many, many scholars have said that Su'ul Dhan cannot be uprooted from our hearts except with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like a disease, like a cancer in our heart and it doesn't leave except if Allah, if we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. The second is Ma'rifatu Asma'illahi wa Sifatihi. The more we are aware of Allah, and his names and attributes, the easier it becomes for me to uproot this disease from my heart. Because I know Allah has absolute knowledge. I know that Allah is Ali. I know that Allah is Basir. I know that Allah is Samir. Allah is listening. So when I have that Yaqeen inside of me, then it becomes a lot more easier to let go. It's okay, I'm not gonna think too much and Allah is watching. Allah will take care of him. If he, if he had the right, wrong intention, Allah is there. Allah will take care of that. Number three, 
The thing that helps is if you want to have su'u dhan, have su'u dhan about yourself. The more you think you're at fault, you're the problem, everything else around you starts becoming better. So, two minutes left, inshallah. So, we'll stop over here for uh, adhan, inshallah. The next few minutes, if you can all, inshallah, get together in making dua um, while you're sitting on your places, and if you want to go grab your seats, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru khatu barik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.